you're at uh, UCLA. UCLA. And Open M Health. And you're a former student of John Postel? Or I'm not Bob a former Collins? student, a former mentee. I okay. hung out in his division at USC. Well, I'm, a, I guess, a cousin mentee there. Yeah. I, I really admire the guy. So tell me, you, you were around when the web was first hitting the Internet. What was the reaction of people to that? Uh, largely one of dismissal initially among the, you know, the academic and the Internet purists, that it was all sort of application level, no real architecture to it. And I vividly remember the conversations at Sitcom where people dismissed HTTP as being a horribly designed protocol that would never scale. And uh, when, when did the uh, transition occur? When did people appreciate that? Just when it happened? When it was way too big to ignore. When it clearly became the thing that was uh, the, wag the, the tail wagging the dog. I see. So what are you doing now with uh, Open M Health? So in Open M Health, we're trying to bring some of that... Uh, uh, wisdom of Tim Berners-Lee and of the original internet architects, right? There was a reason why why Berners-Lee said, we're going to do this in the context of a TCP architecture, because that was an architecture, it wasn't just a platform. And so we're trying to bring some of that notion of open modular architecture to mobile health sense making. And what are you doing? What, what does that mean? What actions are you taking right now? Uh, trying to create a community, instantiate a GitHub repository, and uh, create a platform for sort of minimal interface standards. Uh, minimal standards of devices to each other? Uh, to devices are actually getting a fair amount of attention, so this is actually minimal interface standards of units of sense making. So I take this kind of data stream input and I turn out uh, these features extracted from it. I take in physical activity data and I give you um, how your ambulatory uh, duration, maximum time walking during the day, is changing uh, over time, over the course of months, in correlation with some medications you're taking. So all of those units of sense making that people want to do off these raw data streams, we want to help people mix and match and share those so that the field can move farther faster. So Vista is undergoing a transformation to the next generation uh, open source EHR. How would you see that possibly relating to a, a Vista-like uh, future architecture? So I would think that clinicians in particular disciplines, let's take chronic pain management, will define a few, a few key features that are good outcome markers for a patient. What's the time between when they get up in the morning and when they leave the house as a good sign of whether morning stiffness is being effectively treated by medication? What's the maximum duration of them walking continuously during the day? And so as people, as clinicians, and patients come up with those key features, then you'll have this equivalent of patient-reported or patient-derived uh, clinical features that should become part of the uh, medical record. Well, you know, one of the, Tim's genius as a designer, I think, was HTTP, HTML, and URLs being fairly simple protocols, but they created the simple initial conditions that allowed the web to evolve. Yeah. So what are, the, what are the simple initial conditions for a next generation uh, health information space? So that's a big question, always easier to answer in retrospect. Okay. Right? Uh, so basic uh, patient uh, ability to authenticate data streams. I think patient ability to own and extract uh, uh, data streams to get back out what you put in. And then I would say the initial metadata that surrounds a lot of this data, which is time uh, and location and some point of uh, instrument origin of those data. What about identity? Have you solved the URI problem? Is there a universal we're, identifier? We're not trying to solve that problem. We're trying to adopt best practices as they exist. So is there a universal identity mechanism out there that you see? or? Um, no, but there are a few to choose from. So it's not universal, but it's not complete. Uh, chaos. Okay. Well, Vista was driven by the metadata. I don't know if you know the architecture, but we started with the data dictionary, and that drove the data. Yep. And part of the insight of Jim uh, John Postel also, but uh, I, I think the, the metadata is really important in all this. But I, I'm wondering, um, how do we get this to coalesce and converge? I think. So I th it has to be done sort of organically. So one of the things that we're just we're trying to do is uh, not get too heavy in all the conversation that has to come up up front in terms of data definition ontology, but let people define units of code that take certain, d d that define their data they take in and the form of the data they take out, and sort of let the most useful uh, win over time and be put together. So if you give people a context in which they are sharing and defining 
their inputs and outputs, then you'll you know get less anarchy in terms of what those data definitions are. So, so what's the domain of discourse here we're talking about? Are we talking about uh, Fitbit data streams, Zeo data streams, uh, uh, clinical data? What what are you what what devices are you talking about? Okay, so um, we're talking about a collection of devices. I am not ashamed to say that I think the mobile phone is not just an arbitrary additional device, but it's an actually powerful one that people spend discretionary income on and go back home to pick up if they forgot it because it's how they're connected to the world uh, while they're out and about. So we uh, leverage data streams that come off of a mobile phone, including accelerometry and location and your communication habits that are mediated by the phone and the use of other apps, as well as offboard devices like Fitbits and, and Zeos. The question is, uh, what are you doing with the data? And so we hope that we can bring the clinicians, uh, the clinical innovators into the conversation with the patient innovators. So it's not just about capture of data, but there's some notion of what this is being used for, how it's feeding back to self-titrating uh, medication, uh, for example. So uh, how can a viewer join your movement here? What, what can they do? OpenMHealth.org. We have sort of weekly webinars to help people come in. If you're a health innovator and you'd actually like to try to do something, we'd love to hear from you about how we might uh, match you on to some, of, some existing people in the community. And if you're a technical innovator and you'd like to be doing something that, isn't, uh, uh, that is removed from just a single stovepipe, and share some of your commodity components or grab some existing commodity components and check out GitHub. Great. Anything else you'd like to say? No. Nope. Well, this is Deborah Estrin from UCLA, the John Postel Professor of Computer, Computer Science. Science yes. So thank you very much. Thank you.